Miracles have happened to men and women from all walks of life and all over the world because of this recording. It will also happen to you when you start to use the magic power of your subconscious mind. Every day, the way you think and picture things shapes your style and your future. This recording is meant to teach you that. A man is what his subconscious mind thinks about him. Why is one person sad and another person happy? Why is one person rich and happy and another poor and unhappy? Why is one person scared and worried and the other full of faith and confidence? Why is one man a great success and another an abject failure? Why is one speaker outstanding and immensely popular and another mediocre and unpopular? Why is one man healed of a so-called incurable disease and another isn't? Why is it that so many good, kind, religious people suffer the tortures of the damned in their subconscious and body? Why I wrote this book? I wrote this book to answer and clarify the questions above and many others like them. I have tried to explain the great fundamental truths of your mind in the simplest language possible because I believe it is possible to explain the basic foundational and fundamental laws of life and your mind in everyday language. You will discover that the language of this book is the same as that used in your daily papers, current periodicals, business offices, homes and workshops. As you do, I am absolutely convinced that you will discover a miracle working power that will lift you out of confusion, misery, melancholy and failure, lead you to your true self, solve your problems, free you from emotional and physical bonds and set you on the path to freedom, happiness and peace of mind. In learning how to use your inner powers, you will open the prison door of fear and enter into a life described by Paul as the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Releasing the miracle working power, a personal healing will ever be the most convincing evidence of our subconscious powers. Over 42 years ago, I resolved a malignancy. In medical terminology, it was called sarcoma. By using the healing power of my subconscious mind, which created me and still maintains and governs all my vital functions. The technique I applied is elaborated on in this book, and I feel sure that it will help others to trust the same infinite healing presence lodged in the subconscious depths of all men. Through the kindly offices of my doctor friend, I suddenly realized that it was natural to assume that the creative intelligence which made all my organs, fashioned my body, and started my heart would heal its own handiwork. The ancient proverb says, The doctor dresses the wound, and God heals it. Wonders happen when you pray effectively. Scientific prayer is the harmonious interaction of the conscious and subconscious levels of mind, scientifically directed for a specific purpose. Be sure to read this book several times. The many chapters will show you how this wonderful power works and how you can draw out the wisdom and inspiration that is hidden in your subconscious mind. Everyone prays, but do you know how to pray well? When was the last time you prayed as part of your daily life in an emergency, when you were in danger or trouble, when you were sick, or when you knew death was close. Prayers are being said for you and your friends. Just read any daily newspaper. It says that people all over the country are praying for a child with a so-called incurable illness, for peace between nations, and for a group of miners trapped in a flooded mine. The big answers to prayers make the news and are the subject of testimonies about how powerful prayer is. But what about the simple prayers of children, the daily thanksgiving of grace at the table, and the faithful devotions where a person only wants to connect with God? My job as a counselor has forced me to learn about the different ways people pray. I have personally experienced the power of prayer, and I have talked to and worked with many people who have. One thing that makes this book stand out is that it is down-to-earth and practical, it gives you simple, useful techniques and formulas that you can easily use in your everyday life. 
I have taught these simple processes to men and women all over the world, and just recently, over a thousand men and women of all religions attended a special class in Los Angeles where I talked about the highlights of what is in this book. In this book, you will learn why so many people have asked me, why have I prayed and prayed and got no answer? You will also learn many other ways to impress your subconscious mind and get the answers you need, making this a very useful book that you can always turn to when you need help. Do you believe in something? It's not what a person believes that brings an answer to his prayer. It's how his subconscious mind reacts to the image or thought he has in his mind. This is why all religions are psychologically true. Buddhists, Christians, Muslims and Hebrews can all get answers to their prayers, not because of their religion. A technique, a mythology based on knowing what you were doing and why you were doing it, will help you bring all the good things in life into your subconscious. Basically, answered prayer is when your heart's desire comes true. Everyone wants health, happiness, security, peace of mind and true expression, but many people don't get what they want. A university professor recently told me, I know that if I change, I'll get what I want. Men all over the world share the same mind, Emerson. The miracle working powers of your subconscious mind existed before you and I were born, before any church or world existed. The great eternal truths and principles of life go back to before all religions. With these thoughts in mind, I urge you in the next few chapters to grasp this wonderful, magical, life-changing power that will heal mental and physical wounds and proclaim freedom to the fear-filled mind. Chapter 1. The Treasure Chest Inside You You can find infinite wealth everywhere if you open your mental eyes and see the treasure house of infinity inside you. You have a gold mine inside you where you can get everything you need to live a glorious, joyful and abundant life. Many people are sound asleep because they don't know about this gold mine of infinite intelligence and boundless love inside them. You can draw anything you want. A magnetized piece of steel will lift about 12 times its own weight. Then there's the type of man who is weak and afraid. He questions and fears everything. When chances come up, he says, I might fail. My money could be lost. This kind of man will not go very far in life because he will stay where he is, because he is afraid to move forward, become an attracted man, and find the master secret of all time, the great secret of all time. What do you think is the master secret of atomic energy, thermonuclear energy, the neutron bomb, or interplanetary travel? Write down none of these. Then what is the master secret? Where can it be found? How can it be contacted and used? The answer is incredibly simple. It's in your subconscious mind, which is the last place most people would look for it. The marvelous P. You can get more power, money, health, happiness and joy by learning to connect with and release the hidden power of your subconscious mind. You don't need to get this power. You already have it. You just want to learn how to use it and understand it better so that you can use it in every part of your life. By following the simple steps and techniques in this book, you can get the information and understanding you need. There is infinite intelligence, power, and all that you need in the depths of your subconscious mind, just waiting to be developed and expressed. Start to recognize these possibilities in your deeper mind and they will show up in the outside world. If you are open-minded and willing, the infinite intelligence in your subconscious mind can tell you everything you need to know at any given time and place. Also, the infinite intelligence in your subconscious can give you wonderful everyday knowledge. It can show you the way to perfect expression and your true place in the world. With the help of the wisdom of your subconscious mind, you can find the perfect partner or friend, as well as the right business partner or associate. 
It can find the right buyer for your home and give you all the money you need and the financial freedom you deserve. Your subconscious mind is full of powerful forces of light, love and beauty that you have the right to explore. These forces are invisible, but they are very strong. If you can bring them out, you will find the answer to every problem and the reason behind every effect. You will have the power and knowledge to move forward in abundance, safety, joy and dominion. When people are stuck, the power of their subconscious can free them and make them whole, healthy and strong again. They are then free to go out into the world and experience happiness, health and joyful expression. Your subconscious has a miraculous healing power that can heal a troubled mind or a broken heart. It can open the prison door of your mind and set you free from all kinds of material and physical bonds. Need for a working basis. You can't make significant progress in any field without a working basis that can be used in any situation. You can learn how your subconscious mind works and practice its powers with the confidence that you will get results that are directly related to how well you understand their principles and how you use them to achieve specific objectives and goals. Since I used to be a chemist, I'd like to point out that water is made when two atoms of hydrogen are mixed with one atom of oxygen. You already know that one atom of oxygen and one atom of carbon will make carbon monoxide, which is a poisonous gas. But if you add another atom of oxygen, you'll get carbon dioxide, which is a harmless gas, and so on throughout the world of chemical compounds. You shouldn't think that the rules of physics, chemistry and math are different from the rules in your subconscious mind. For example, water seeks its own level. This is a universal rule that applies to all water. Another universal rule is that matter expands when heated. This is true everywhere, at all times and in all situations. For example, you can heat a piece of steel and it will expand no matter what the... It is also a universal truth that whatever you think about in your subconscious mind shows up in the screen of space as conditioned experience and event. Your prayer has been answered because your subconscious mind is principle, which means the way something works. For example, electricity works from a higher potential to a lower potential. If you don't change this principle when you use electricity, but instead work with nature, you can bridge. The law of your mind is belief. This means that you have to believe in how your mind works, which means that you have to believe in belief itself. The belief of your mind is the thought of your mind, nothing else. Everything you experience, everything that happens, everything you do, is your subconscious mind reacting to your thoughts. Remember that what matters is not what you believe, but what you believe in your mind. Believe in the eternal truths and verities of life, and you will move forward, upward, and onward to God. If you read this book and follow the advice in it about the subconscious mind, you will be able to pray scientifically and effectively for yourself and others. Your prayer will be answered by the universal law of action and reaction. Thought is the beginning of action, and the reaction is the response from your subconscious mind that matches the nature of your thought. Joy health, peace and goodwill will fill your mind and amazing things will happen in your life. Mind duality. You only have one mind, but it has two different functions. All thinking men and women today know where the line between the two functions is. The two functions of your mind are very different from each other and they each have their own powers and traits. Many names are used to describe the two parts of your mind the objective and subjective mind, the conscious and subconscious mind, the waking and sleeping mind, the surface self and the deep self, the voluntary mind and the involuntary mind, the male and the female mind, and so on. The terms conscious and subconscious are used throughout this book to describe the two parts of your mind. The conscious and subconscious minds. 
A great way to understand how your mind works is to picture it as a garden. You are the gardener, and all day you are planting seeds, thoughts, in your subconscious mind based on how you normally think. What you plant in your subconscious mind you will harvest in your body and surroundings. Start planting thoughts of peace, happiness, doing the right thing, goodwill and wealth right now. Think about these qualities in a quiet, interested way and fully accept them in your conscious mind. Keep planting these wonderful seeds, thoughts, in your mind garden and you will reap a glorious harvest. There are both good and bad seeds that can grow in your subconscious mind. Do people pick grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Every thought has a cause and every condition has an effect. Because of this, you need to be in charge of your thoughts so that only good things happen. Because your subconscious mind stores positive, peaceful and constructive thoughts when you know the truth, it will respond with the magic working power of your subconscious mind to bring about peaceful conditions, pleasant surroundings and the best of everything. If you learn to manage your thoughts, you will be able to use the power of your subconscious to solve any problem. In other words, you will be working with the law that controls everything that is endless and all-powerful. Whatever place you live, you will see that most people live in the world without. On the other hand, more enlightened men are very interested in the world within. Your world without is made up of your thoughts, feelings and images. It is the only creative power. Everything in your world of expression was created by you in the inner world of your mind, whether you are aware of it or not. You can change your whole life if you know how your conscious and subconscious minds work together. If you want to change the outside conditions, you have to change the cause. Most men try to change conditions and circumstances by working with them to get rid of trouble, confusion, lack and restrictions. You have to get rid of the cause, which is how you are using your conscious mind or how you are thinking and picturing things. Infinite intelligence, wisdom, vital forces and energies flow through your subconscious. Your thoughts create the shape or matrix through which these things flow. Each chapter of this book shows you how to use the laws of your mind in real life to experience wealth instead of poverty, wisdom over superstition and ignorance, peace over pain, joy over sadness, and lightness instead of darkness. There is no greater gift than these in terms of the mind, the heart, and the body. Many great scientists, artists, poets, singers, writers, and creators have a deep understanding of how the conscious and subconscious minds work. Caruso, the great operatic tenor, got stage fright one time. He said that his throat was paralyzed by spasms of intense fear that tightened the muscles in his throat. He sweet a lot, and he felt bad because he had to go on stage in a few minutes and was shaking with fear and trepidation. He said, they will laugh at me. He then yelled in front of the people behind the stage, the little me wants to strangle the big me within. He told the little me, get out of here. He was talking about the vast power and knowledge of his subconscious mind when he said, the big me wants to sing through me. He then yelled, get out leave now. The big me is going to sing, his subconscious mind told him, freeing all of his vital forces. When the call came, he walked out on stage and sang beautifully, captivating the crowd. You can now see that Caruso must have known that the mind has two levels, the aware or logical level and the subconscious or illogical level. Your subconscious mind reacts to the way you think. Fear, worry and anxiety build up in your subconscious mind, the big me. When this happens, the negative emotions that were stored there come out and fill your conscious mind with panic, foreboding and despair. At this point, you can, like Caruso, speak positively and authoritatively to the irrational emotions that are building up in your deeper mind. Be still, be quiet. 
I am in charge. You need to follow my orders. You have to do what I say. You can't get in where you don't belong. Seeing how you can speak authoritatively and with conviction to the irrational movement of your deeper self can bring silence, harmony, and peace to your mind. The subconscious is subject to the conscious mind, which is why it is called the subconscious or subjective. You will notice big differences and different ways of working. To give you an idea of the main differences, think of the conscious mind as a navigator or captain on the bridge of a ship. He steers the ship and gives orders to the men in the engine room, who then control all the boilers, instruments, gauges, etc. The men in the engine room don't know where they're going. They just do what the navigator or captain says. If the man on the bridge told them to go off the cliff, they would. In the same way, your conscious mind is the captain and master of your ship, which is your body, your environment, and everything else in your life. Your subconscious mind follows the orders you give it based on what your conscious mind believes and accepts. For example, if you keep telling people, I can't afford it, your subconscious mind will believe you and make sure you can't buy what you want. As long as you keep saying, a pretty young college student looking at a pretty but pricey travel bag in a store window on Christmas Eve. She was going home to Buffalo, New York for the holidays. She was about to say, I can't afford that bag. When she remembered something she had heard in one of my lectures, never finish a negative statement, reverse it immediately and wonders will happen in your life. She said, that bag is mine. You can buy it. I mentally accept it and my subconscious makes sure I receive it. At 8 p.m. on Christmas Eve, her fiancé gave her a bag that looked exactly like the one she had looked at and mentally identified with. At 10 a.m. that same morning, she had filled her mind with the thought of expectation and let her deeper mind, which knows how to achieve things, handle the rest. It was a student at the University of Southern California. She told me, I didn't have the money to buy that bag, but now I know where to find money and everything else I need inside me in the Treasure House of Eternity. Another simple example. If you say, I don't like mushrooms, and then you eat mushrooms in a sauce or salad, you will get indigestion because your subconscious mind is telling you, the boss, your conscious mind, doesn't like mushrooms. This is a funny example of how your conscious and subconscious minds work in very different ways. A woman might say, I wake up at three o'clock if I drink coffee at night. Every time she drinks coffee, her subconscious mind nudges her as if to say, the boss wants you to stay awake tonight. Your subconscious mind works 24 hours a day and will bring you all the good things that come from thinking in the same way. What her subconscious mind said, a woman wrote me a few months ago, I am 75 years old, widowed, and have grown children. I was getting by on an income and living alone. I remember listening to your talks about the subconscious mind. You said that thoughts could be sent to the subconscious mind through repetition, hope, and expectation. I started to say, I am wanted, over and over again. I am happily married to a kind, loving, and mentally aware man. I kept saying this over and over again every day for about two weeks. One day, at the corner drugstore, I met a retired pharmacist. He was nice, accepting, and very holy, in my opinion. He really did answer my prayer. He asked me to marry him within a week, and we are now on our honeymoon in Europe. I am sure that the wisdom in my subconscious mind brought us together by divine plan. The woman found that the treasure house was inside of her. In her heart, she knew that her prayer was true, and her assurance sank into her subconscious mind, which is where creativity lives. If she could make a subjective embodiment happen, her subconscious mind would use the law of attraction to bring her the truth. As if by magic, her inner mind, which was full of knowledge and wisdom, brought them together. Make sure you think about things that are true, fair, clean, beautiful, and good news. 
If there is any good and praise, think about these things. Part 2. How your mind sees things. You should learn how to use your mind. Your mind is split into two parts, the awareness level, which is logical, and the subconscious level, which is irrational. Your conscious mind thinks things, and the things you think over and over again go into your subconscious mind, which then makes things that match the kinds of things you think. You feel feelings and come up with new ideas in your subconscious mind. If you think good thoughts, good things will happen. If you think bad thoughts, bad things will happen. This is how your mind works. Remember that the subconscious mind starts to carry out a thought as soon as it agrees with it. It's a strange but true fact that the rule of the subconscious mind works for both good and bad thoughts. There is failure, anger and sadness when this law is used in a bad way. But when your normal way of thinking is positive and peaceful, you are healthy, successful and wealthy. When you start to think and feel right, you will have peace of mind and a good body. Whatever you believe in your mind and feel to be true, your subconscious mind will accept and bring into your life. Getting your subconscious mind to agree with your idea is all you need to do. The law of your subconscious mind will then bring you the health, peace or place you want. When you give your subconscious mind an order or decree, it will faithfully repeat the thought and press on it. Your mind works like this. Your subconscious mind will react or respond based on the type of thought or idea you have in your waking mind. Psychiatrists and psychologists say that when thoughts reach your subconscious mind, they leave marks on the brain cells. When your subconscious mind agrees with an idea, it starts to act on it right away. It works by putting thoughts together and using all the information you've learned in your life to do what it's supposed to do. It uses all the power, energy and knowledge that you have inside you. It sets up nature's rules to get what it wants. It may seem to solve your problems right away sometimes, but other times it may take days, weeks or even longer. As we thought about the past, we learned that conscious and subconscious words are different. You need to keep in mind that these are not two minds, but rather two areas of action in the same mind. The mind that thinks and reasons is your aware mind. That part of the mind makes the choice. You pick out your books, your home and your life partner, among other things. Your mind is where all of your choices are made. Alternatively, your heart keeps beating even when you're not thinking about it. This happens naturally and your subconscious mind controls processes like digesting, circulation and breathing that you are not aware of. What you consciously believe or what is pressed into your subconscious mind will be accepted. It doesn't try to figure things out like your conscious mind does and it doesn't fight with you in a way that makes you look bad. Your subconscious mind is like dirt that will grow any seed, good or bad. Your thoughts are alive and could be compared to seeds. Negative and harmful thoughts will keep working against you in your subconscious mind and eventually they will show up in your waking life in a way that matches them. Keep in mind that your subconscious mind doesn't try to prove that your thoughts are good or bad, true or false. Instead, it reacts based on the nature of your thoughts or ideas. For instance, if you consciously think something is true when it might not be, your subconscious mind will accept it as true and start to do things that have to happen because you consciously thought it was true. Studies by psychologists, many studies by psychologists and others on people who are hypnotized, have shown that the subconscious mind can't make choices and comparisons that are needed for thinking. They have shown over and over that your subconscious mind will believe anything, even if it isn't true. Once it has accepted a suggestion, it reacts in a way that fits the type of recommendation. To show that your subconscious mind is open to suggestion, a skilled magician can tell a subject that he is Napoleon Bonaparte or even a cat or a dog. 
and the subject will act the part perfectly. For the time being, his attitude changes, and he thinks he is whoever the operator tells him he is. A good magician might tell one of his students that their back hurts, another that their nose is bleeding, a third that they look like a figure made of marble, and a fourth that they are freezing because it is below zero outside. Each person will follow the line of his own idea, not paying any attention to anything around him that doesn't relate to his idea. These simple pictures make it clear what the difference is between your conscious mind, which thinks and reasons, and your subconscious mind, which doesn't care about other people and believes whatever your conscious mind believes to be true. This is why it's important to choose thoughts, ideas and theories that make you feel good, fix you, inspire you, and make your soul happy. The words objective and subject helped me understand that your aware mind is sometimes called your objective mind because it deals with things in the outside world. There is an objective mind that knows about the objective world. It uses your five senses to observe it. When you interact with the world around you, your objective mind guides and directs you. Your five senses help you learn, while your objective mind learns from what it sees, does, and learns from other people. It has already been said that thinking is the most important job of the objective mind. Let's say you are one of the many people who visit Los Angeles every year. You would think it is a beautiful city after seeing the parks, gardens, grand buildings, and lovely houses. This is how your objective mind works. People sometimes call your subconscious mind your subjective mind. Your subjective mind knows about the world around you in ways other than your five senses. Your subjective mind picks up on things intuitively. It's where your feelings and memories live. The most important things that your subjective mind does are when your objective senses are off. In other words, that intelligence shows up when your objective mind is off or sleepy. People with clairvoyance and clairaudience have subjective minds that can see and hear without using their normal eyes or ears. Your subjective mind can leave your body, go to faraway places, and come back with information, which is usually very accurate and true. You can see what other people are thinking, read what's inside sealed packages, and open safes through your subjective mind. Your subjective mind can understand what other people are thinking even when they aren't using normal objective ways to talk to them. Understanding how the objective and subjective minds work together is very important if we want to learn the real art of prayer. The subconscious mind doesn't have the ability to think like your conscious mind does, and it also can't argue strongly. If you give it bad ideas, it will take them as real and make them happen as conditions, experiences, and events. Everything that has happened to you is because of the thoughts that you believe in and have pushed into your subconscious mind. If you have taught your subconscious mind false ideas, the only way to get rid of them is to think positive, harmonious thoughts over and over again. Your subconscious mind will accept these thoughts and form new, healthy habits in your life and thoughts. This is because your subconscious mind is where habits are formed. The way your conscious mind thinks about things over and over again creates deep memories in your subconscious mind. This is very good for you if the thoughts you usually have are peaceful, positive and cooperative. If you've been thinking negatively about things like fear, worry or other negative emotions, the key is to understand that your subconscious mind has all the power to make you happy and healthy. Because your subconscious mind is creative and connected to your spiritual source, it will bring about the freedom and happiness you have sincerely asked for. The huge power of suggestion. You should already know that your conscious mind is like a guard at the gate, and its main job is to keep your subconscious mind safe from false ideas. One of the basic rules of mind is now clear to you. Your subconscious mind can be trained. 
You already know that your subconscious mind doesn't compare and contrast things or reason and figure things out on its own. Your conscious mind does those things. It only responds to the thoughts and feelings that your aware mind sends it. In other words, it doesn't say which move is better than another. Here's a classic example of how powerful suggestion can be. When you talk to a shy passenger on a ship, you might say something like, You look very sick. Look at how pale you are. I'm sure you're going to be seasick. Let me help you to your cabin. This passenger turns pale because your suggestion of sickness connects with his own fears and worries. He accepts your help getting down to the berth, which is where your bad idea comes true because he agreed with it. Different responses to the same suggestion. It is true that people will respond differently to the same suggestion depending on their subconscious training or beliefs. You could go up to a sailor on the ship and say, My dear fellow, you look very sick. Aren't you feeling sick? You look to me like you're going to be seasick. Depending on his personality, he will either laugh at your joke or show some slight anger. It didn't work in this case because your idea of seasickness was linked in his mind with his lack of that problem, so it made him feel confident instead of scared or worried. In the dictionary, a suggestion is the act or instance of putting something into one's mind. It's also the mental process by which someone entertains, accepts, or acts on a suggestion. Remember that an idea can't make the subconscious mind do something that the conscious mind doesn't want it to do. To put it another way, your aware mind can say no to the idea. For the sailor, he didn't fear getting seasick because he was sure he wouldn't get sick, and the negative thought couldn't make him afraid at all. The thought of getting seasick made the other traveller feel his own fear of being sick at sea come out. Each of us has our own fears, beliefs and views that we hold deep inside. These assumptions run our lives. A suggestion doesn't have any power on its own. You have to mentally accept it for it to work. Once you do this, your subconscious powers will move in a way that is bound by the suggestion. How he lost his arm. I give a run of talks at the London Truth Forum and Caxton Hall every two or three years. A lot of years ago, I started this thread. The head, Dr. Evelyn Fleet, told me about an English newspaper story that was about the power of suggestion. Over the course of about two years, a man told his subconscious mind, I would give my right arm to see my daughter cured. It turned out that his daughter had a crippling form of arthritis and a skin disease that was said to be irreversible. The situation couldn't get better with medical care and the father really wanted his daughter to get better and said so in those exact words. According to Dr. Evelyn Fleet, the newspaper story said that the family was riding their bikes one day when their car crashed into another. When the father's right arm was torn off at the shoulder, the daughter's pain and skin problem went away right away. It is very important that you only tell your subconscious mind things that will help, inspire, and bless you in every way. Don't forget that your subconscious mind doesn't believe jokes. It takes what you say at face value. Fear was stopped by auto-suggestion. Examples of auto-suggestion. When you auto-suggest something to yourself, you are offering something clear and specific. In his great book on auto-suggestion, Herbert Parkin writes about the following event. It's funny in some ways, which helps you remember it. A person from New York who is in Chicago looks at his watch, which is set an hour ahead of Chicago time, and tells a friend from Chicago that it is 12 o'clock. Our friend from Chicago tells our friend from New York that he is hungry and needs to go to lunch, but he doesn't take into account the time difference. You can get rid of different fears and other bad things with auto-suggestion. A young singer was asked to come in and try out. She was excited about the interview, but three times before she had messed up badly because she was afraid of failing. But this young woman had a great voice, but she kept telling herself, when it's my turn to sing, maybe they won't like me. I'll try, 
but I'm full of fear and anxiety. Her subconscious mind took these negative auto-suggestions as a request and brought them into her experience. There was an automatic idea that caused it. Example, thoughts of silent fear that became emotional and personal. One thing that helped her get over it was locking herself in a room three times a day. Her body relaxed as she sat down in a couch and closed her eyes. She did what she could to keep her body still. Physical inertia makes the mind more open to suggestions and makes it easier for the mind to be passive. To fight the fear suggestion, she told herself, I sing beautifully. I am poised, serene, confident, and calm. She said this to herself five to ten times each sitting, slowly, quietly, and with feeling. She had three of these sessions every day, plus one right before bed. After a week, she was totally calm and sure of herself. When she was asked to try out, she did an amazing, wonderful tryout. How she improved her memory. A woman who was 75 years old had a bad habit of telling herself, I'm losing my memory. She changed her thinking and started using auto-suggestions, saying to herself, My memory is improving in every department. I shall always remember whatever I need to know at every moment of time and point of space. The impressions received will be clear and more definite. I shall retain them automatically and with ease. Whatever I wish to recall will immediately present itself in the correct form in my mind. How he got rid of his bad temper. Many men who complained of being irritable and having a bad temper were very responsive to auto-suggestion. They got great results by saying these affirmations three or four times a day, in the morning, at noon, and before bed, for about a month. From now on, I will be more cheerful. Joy, happiness, and cheerfulness will be my normal states of mind. Every day, I am becoming more and more lovable and understanding. A look at the positive and negative effects of suggestion with examples and thoughts on heterosuggestion. When someone else makes a suggestion, it's called heterosuggestion. Suggestion has always been an important part of people's lives and thoughts. Throughout history and in every country on earth, it has been the most important force in religion in many places. We can train and control ourselves with suggestions, but they can also be used to control and direct people who don't understand the rules of mind. In its good forms, it is wonderful and magnificent. In its bad forms, it is one of the mind's most destructive response patterns, leading to patterns of sadness, failure, pain, illness, and disaster. Have you agreed to any of these since you were a child? Most of us have been told a lot of bad advice and don't know how to fight them. We accepted them without realizing it. You'll never amount to anything. You mustn't. You'll fail. You have no chance. You're all wrong. It's not worth it. It's not what you know, but who you know. The world is going to the dogs. What's the point? Nobody cares. It's not worth your time. You're too old now. Things are getting worse and worse. Life is an endless grind. Love is for the birds. You just can't win. And pretty soon, yo. If you are an adult and use positive auto-suggestion, which is a method for reconditioning, then no. The way people treated you in the past can make you act in ways that hurt your personal and social life. By releasing you from the bad verbal training that might otherwise change your life pattern and make it hard to form good habits, auto-suggestion can help. You can fight back against bad ideas. You can read dozens of things in the paper every day that could plant the seeds of death, fear, worry, and anxiety if you allow them to. These scary thoughts might make you give up on life. Now that you know you can reject all of these bad ideas by giving your subconscious mind good ones, you can fight all of these bad thoughts. Check in on the bad ideas that people tell you about a daily basis. You don't have to let harmful heterosuggestion change your mind. In our youth and teen years, we've all dealt with it. When you think back, 
it's easy to remember how parents, friends, family, teachers, and co-workers all help it spread bad ideas. If you look at what was said to you, you will see that a lot of it was lying. Many of the things that were said were meant to control you or make you afraid. This process of heterosuggestion happens in every home, office, workplace, and club. An important thing to remember is that many of these ideas are meant to get you to think, feel, and act in ways that benefit other people. It was advice that killed a man. This is an example of heterosuggestion. A family member of mine went to see a crystal gazer in India. The gazer told him that he had a bad heart and that he would die on the next new moon. He began to tell everyone in his family about this prediction and made plans for his will. He fully agreed with this strong idea, so it went into his subconscious mind. My family member also told me that people thought this crystal gazer had strange abilities, which they called powers, that let him help or hurt people. Like they said he would, he died, but he didn't know that he killed himself. I think a lot of us have heard stories like this that are based on stupid and silly superstitions. With what we know about how the subconscious mind works in mind, let us look at what happened. The subconscious mind of a person will accept and act on whatever the conscious mind thinks. When my cousin went to see the fortune teller, he was happy, healthy, strong, and full of life. She told him something very bad to do, and he agreed with her. The thought that he was going to die at the next new moon kept going through his mind, making him scared. He then told everyone what happened and got ready for the end. Something happened in his mind, and his own thoughts caused what he thought was his death, which was really just the destruction of his body through his fear and hope for the end. The woman who said he would die didn't have any more power than these sticks and stones in the field. The end she suggested could not be made or happen because of her idea. If he knew how his mind worked, he would have totally ignored her negative advice and not paid any attention to what she said. He knew in his heart that his thoughts and feelings ran his life, like an arrow aimed at a battleship. Her forecast could have been totally cancelled out and lost its power without hurting him. Other people's ideas don't have any power over you unless you give them power through your own thoughts. You have to agree to the thought. You have to accept it. Only then does it become your thought and you are the one who thinks. Don't forget that you have the power to choose. Pick love, health, and life. It's powerful to start with the idea that something is true. Your mind works like a syllogism. This means that the answer your subconscious mind gives to a question or problem in your mind is based on the main idea your conscious mind believes to be true. If your premise is true, then your conclusion must also be true. For example, every virtue is laudable, kindness is a virtue, therefore kindness is laudable, or all formed things change and pass away, the pyramids of Egypt are formed things, therefore the pyramids will pass away someday. The first statement is called the major premise, and the right conclusion must always come after the right premise. In May 1962, a college professor who came to some of my science of mind talks at Town Hall in New York City told me, Everything in my life is upside down. I've lost my health, my wealth, and my friends. Everything I touch goes wrong, he said. I told him that he should base his thinking on the idea that his subconscious mind was infinitely smart and was helping him in all areas of his life, emotionally, mentally, and financially. After that, his subconscious mind would make smart choices and decisions for him, heal his body, and bring peace and calm back to his mind. Infinite wisdom leads and guides me in all my ways. That was the main idea that this professor used to paint a picture of how he wanted his life to be. I am in great health. In my mind and body, the law of balance works. I own beauty, love, peace, and plenty. 
My whole life is based on the idea of right behavior and divine order. I know that my main idea is based on the eternal truths of life, and I know, feel, and believe that my subconscious mind reacts to what my conscious mind thinks. He wrote to me, I said the above statement several times a day in a slow, quiet and loving way, knowing that they were going deep into my subconscious mind and that results would come. I'm very thankful for the talk you gave me, and I'd also like to add that all parts of my life are getting better. It works. The subconscious doesn't fight in a controversial way. Your subconscious mind is very smart and knows all the answers. There is no back and forth between you and it. You are programming your subconscious with negative thoughts when you say things like, I can't do this. I am too old now. I can't meet this obligation. I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. Or, I don't know the right politician. Your subconscious then responds in kind. You're actually getting in the way of your own good, which is causing you to experience lack, limitation and anger setting up problems, delays, and roadblocks in your conscious mind shuts down the smart and wise information that lives in your subconscious mind. In a way, you're saying that your subconscious mind can't help you solve your problem. This makes your mind and emotions clogged, which then leads to sickness and nervous habits. Affirm out loud several times a day, the infinite intelligence that gave me this desire leads, guides, and shows me the perfect plan for how my desire will come true. This will help you get what you want and stop being frustrated. I know that the deeper knowledge of my subconscious is now reacting and that what I think and feel inside is shown outside. There is a state of balance and calmness. Your subconscious mind will not answer if you say things like, there is no way out, I am lost, there is no way out of this dilemma, or I am stymied and blocked. If you want your subconscious to help you, you need to ask it to do something. It helps you all the time. It's in charge of your breathe and beating right now. A cut on your finger gets better after you touch it, and its nature is to always want to care for and protect you. Your subconscious mind is separate from your conscious mind, but it agrees with the ways you think and picture things. When you ask your subconscious for help with a problem, it will answer, but it wants you to make a choice and a real judgment in your waking mind first. The answer is in your subconscious mind, that much is clear. But if you say, I don't see any way out, I'm totally lost, or why don't I get an answer? You are making your prayer useless, like a soldier keeping track of time. You don't get anywhere. Calm your mind, let go, and say to yourself gently, my subconscious knows the answer. It's now reacting to me. I'm thankful because I know that my subconscious mind is more intelligent than I am and is now giving me the right answer. Now that I have real belief, the pomp and beauty of my subconscious mind are free to roam. I'm glad that it's true. Chapter 3 How Your Subconscious Mind Can Do Miracles Your subconscious mind has a huge amount of power. It gives you ideas, leads you, and brings back names, facts, and scenes from your memory bank. Your subconscious mind starts your heartbeat, controls how your blood flows, and runs your stomach, absorption, and elimination. You subconscious mind changes a piece of bread into tissue, muscle, bone, and blood when you eat it. Even the smartest person in the world can't figure this out. All of your body's important processes and functions are run by your subconscious mind, which also knows how to solve all of your issues. Your subconscious mind is always working. It never sleeps or rests. There is a magic power in your subconscious that you can access by telling it directly before you go to sleep that you want a certain thing to happen. You will be happy to learn that forces inside you will be freed, which will lead to the outcome you want. So, here is a source of strength and knowledge that connects you to authority, the power that makes the sun shine and moves the planets around. 
your goals, hopes and need to help others come from your subconscious mind. Shakespeare saw great facts that most people of his time didn't know about through his subconscious mind. Definitely, Phidias, a Greek sculptor, showed beauty, order, balance and proportion in marble and metal because that's what his subconscious mind told him to do. It made it possible for Raphael to paint Madonnas and Ludwig van Beethoven to write symphonies. In 1955, I taught at the Yoga Forest University in Rishikesh, India, and a traveling surgeon from Bombay came to talk to me. I learned about a Scottish surgeon named Dr. James S. Dale from him. Dale worked in Bengal before ether and other modern forms of anesthesia were found. Dr. Dale did about 400 important surgeries of all types between 1843 and 1846. These included amputations, removal of tumors and dangerous growths, and surgeries on the eye, ear and throat. Mental anesthesia was used for all of the surgeries. Only this one Indian doctor in Rishikesh told me that the death rate for patients who had surgery by Dr. S. Dale was very low, possibly only 2% or 3%. People who were having surgery did not feel any pain, and no one died. While his patients were under hypnosis, Dr. S. Dale told their subconscious thoughts that no infection or sick condition would happen. You should remember that this was before Louis Pasteur, Joseph Lister and others showed that diseases are caused by germs and that tools that aren't clean can cause infections. This Indian surgeon said that the low death rate and almost complete lack of infections were almost certainly due to what Dr. S. Dale said to his patient's subconscious thoughts. According to the nature of his idea, they replied, Imagine how amazing it must have been for a surgeon more than 120 years ago to find out that the subconscious mind can do amazing things. Stop you in your tracks and fill you with awe when you think about the spiritual powers of your subconscious mind. There are many things you can think about when you think about this power. It can see and hear things that aren't there. It doesn't care about time or space. It can free you from all pain and suffering, and it can solve any problem. All of these things and many more show you that you have power and knowledge that goes beyond your mind, which makes you amazed at how amazing everything is. All of these things make you happy and make you think that your subconscious mind can do miracles. You keep a record of your life in your subconscious, regardless of what views, opinions, theories, or dogmas you write down, bury or impress on your subconscious mind, they will show up in your life as facts, situations and events. You will feel what you write on the inside on the outside. Real and imagined, seen and unseen, thought and its manifestation are the two sides of your life. Your aware mind, which is made up of thinking cells, sends your thoughts to your brain. When your objective or aware mind fully accepts the thought, it is sent to the solar plexus, which is also known as the brain of your mind. There, it takes on muscle and shows up in your experience, as we've already talked about. The only thing that can make your subconscious act is what you write on it. It agrees with your decision or what your aware mind tells you. That's why you're always adding to the book of life. Your thoughts become your memories. Man is what he thinks all day long, wrote the American writer Ralph Waldo Emerson. The subconscious influences the awareness. Some people say that your subconscious mind has the power to change the world. William James was the founder of American psychology. Your subconscious mind is one that is smarter and wiser than you can imagine. It gets its water from underground streams and is known as the law of life. No matter what you tell your subconscious mind, it will do everything it can to make it happen. Because of this, you need to give it good ideas and helpful thoughts. Everyone is unhappy and in a lot of trouble because they don't understand how their conscious and subconscious thoughts work together. Being healthy, happy, at peace and full of joy 
are all things that happen when these two ideas work together in harmony. When the awareness and subconscious work together in peace and harmony, there is no sickness or conflict. When the tomb of Hermes was opened, people were filled with hope and awe because they thought it held the most important secret of all time. As inside, so outside, as high as above, so below was the key. Or to put it another way, whatever is in your subconscious mind shows up on the screen of space. Moses, Isaiah, and all the other wise men and women throughout history have told us the same thing. Conditions, situations, and events show what you personally believe to be true. As in heaven, action and feeling must be balanced in your body and in the world around you. This is life's most important rule. Nature is ruled by the law of action and response, of rest and motion. These two forces must balance each other out for there to be unity and balance. You are here to let the life force flow through you in a smooth, regular way. Equal amounts of air must be taken in in the alcove, and the sensation and attitude must be the same. Your anger comes from wanting something that you don't have. If you think mean, dangerous and negative things, they will make you feel mean feelings that you need to let out and show. Because these feelings are bad, they often show up as ulcers, heart problems, stress, and worries. How do you think or feel about yourself right now? That thought comes out of every part of you. You think that your health, finances, friends, and social standing are all great examples of who you think you are. What is engraved in your subconscious mind and shows up in every part of your life has this real value. Because we think bad thoughts, we hurt ourselves. How many times have you hurt yourself by being scared, angry, jealous, or revengeful? This is what affects your subconscious mind. These bad views did not come from birth. If you feed your subconscious mind positive thoughts, it will get rid of all the bad patterns that are stored there. You won't be able to remember the past as long as you keep doing this. An abnormal growth on the skin is healed by the subconscious. Healing someone will always be the strongest proof that the subconscious mind has the power to heal. Over 40 years ago, prayer helped me get rid of a skin cancer. The growth couldn't be stopped by medicine and things were getting worse. A clergyman who knew a lot about psychology told me what the 139th Psalm really meant when it said, in thy book were written all my members, which were continually made when there were none of them. He said that the word book meant my subconscious mind, which made all of my organs from an invisible cell. He also said that since my subconscious mind made my body, it could fix it and make it whole again, using the perfect pattern that was already there. This priest showed me his watch and told me that someone had to make it, and that person had to have an idea in their mind before the watch could be made. The watchmaker could fix this watch if it wasn't working right. My friend informed me that the intelligence in my subconscious that made my body was like a watchmaker. It knew how to fix, repair, and direct all of my body's important functions and processes. But I had to tell it what health meant to me. To heal would happen. This would have to happen first. I prayed in a very simple way. The infinite intelligence in my subconscious mind made my body and all of its parts. It knows how to heal me. Its wisdom shaped all of my organs, tissues, muscles and bones. This infinite healing presence within me is now changing every part of my being, making me whole and perfect. I thank the creative intelligence within me for my healing. I know it is happening now. Wonderful are its works. My face was healed and whole in about three months. You can see that all I did was give my subconscious mind life-giving patterns of wholeness, beauty, and perfection. This got rid of the bad pictures and thought patterns that were causing all my problems. Nothing shows up on your body until the mental version is first thought of. When you change your mind by flooding it with positive thoughts, your body changes too. This is what all healing is based on. 
wonderful are your works, and my soul, or subconscious mind, knows this for sure. Psalm 139-14 How the subconscious mind controls all body functions. Whether you are awake or sound asleep in bed, your subconscious mind controls all of your body's important functions without your conscious mind's help. For example, your heart keeps beating in a steady rhythm, your lungs don't stop working, and the process of breathing in and out, which lets your blood take in fresh air, continues the same way it does when you're awake. Your subconscious mind is in charge of all the strange things that happen in your body, like digestion and hormonal secretions. Whether you are awake or asleep, the hair on your face always grows. Researchers say that while you sleep, your skin makes a lot more sweat than when you're awake. You can use your eyes, ears and other organs while you sleep. So for example, a lot of our great scientists have gotten answers to hard questions while they were sleeping. They saw the answers in their dreams. A lot of the time, worry, anxiety, fear and sadness in your conscious mind mess up the usual rhythm of your heart lungs, and stomach and bowels. These ways of thinking get in the way of your subconscious mind working in harmony. If you're having mental problems, the best thing to do is to let go, calm down, and stop thinking. Ask your subconscious mind to take over in a way that is peaceful, harmonious, and in good order. Your body will start to work normally again after those changes. Make sure you talk to your subconscious mind with power and conviction, and it will do what you say. Your subconscious mind wants to keep you alive and heal you no matter what. It makes you love your kids, which shows that you naturally want to protect all living things. Let's say you ate some bad food by chance. Your subconscious mind would tell you to throw up the food. If you accidentally ate something poisonous, your subconscious would get rid of it. In the event that you fully trusted its miraculous power, you would be fully returned to health. Tricks for getting your subconscious to work for you. First, understand that your subconscious mind is always at work. It works day and night, whether you do anything with it or not. Your subconscious builds your body, but you can't see or hear that process through your waking mind. Your mind, not your subconscious mind, is what you need to talk to. Make sure that the thoughts you normally have are based on things that are lovely, true, fair, and of good report. Keep your conscious mind busy by expecting the best. Now is the time to take care of your conscious mind. Deep down, you know that your subconscious mind is always speaking, reproducing, and creating what you think about all the time. Remember that the life force in you flows through you based on the nature of your thoughts, just like water takes the shape of the pipe it runs through. Tell yourself that the healing force in your subconscious is moving through you as unity. Good health, peace, happiness, and plenty. You can think of it as a live mind that sticks with you along the way. Strongly believe that it is always running through you, giving you life, inspiration, and wealth. It will react just like this. It happens exactly the way you think it will. The mending principle of the subconscious fixes nerves that have become weak. There is the famous case of Madame Bayer from France, which was properly verified and is kept in the records of the medical department in Lourdes, France. She was blind because her visual nerves had died and stopped working. She went to Lourdes and said she was healed miraculously. A Protestant girl named Ruth Cranston looked into him and wrote about healings at Lourdes in McCall's magazine in November 1955. She also wrote the following about Madame Bayer. At Lourdes, she regained her sight incredibly with the optic nerve still lifeless and useless, as several doctors could testify after repeated examinations. A month later, Upon re-examination, it was found that the seeing mechanism had been restored to normal, but at first, so far as medical examination could tell, she was seeing with dead eyes. I have visited Lord E's several times where I too witnessed some healings, and of course, as we shall explain in the next chapter, 
There is no doubt that healings take place at many shrines throughout the world, Christian and non-Christian. The waters of the shrine did not heal Madame Baya, to whom we just referred, but by her own subconscious mind, which responded to her belief. The healing principle within her subconscious mind responded to the nature of her belief. Belief is a thought in the subconscious mind. It means to accept something as true. The thought accepted executes itself automatically. Undoubtedly, Madame Baya went to the shrine with expectancy and great faith, knowing in her heart she would receive a healing. Her subconscious mind responded accordingly, releasing the ever-present healing forces. The subconscious mind, which created the eye, can certainly bring a dead nerve back to life. What the creative principle created, it can recreate according to your belief. Is it done unto you? How to tell your subconscious mind that you are in great health? I was in Johannesburg, South Africa, and I knew a Protestant preacher. He told me how he gave his subconscious mind the idea of perfect health. Leukemia was in his lungs. This is exactly how he does things, which he wrote down and gave me. Several times a day, I would make certain that I was completely relaxed mentally and physically. I relaxed my body by speaking to it as follows. My feet are relaxed. My ankles are relaxed. My legs are relaxed. My abdominal muscles are relaxed. My heart and lungs are relaxed. My head is relaxed. My whole being is completely relaxed. After about five minutes, I would feel sleepy and drowsy, and then I would affirm this truth. The perfection of God is now being expressed through me. The idea of perfect health is now filling my subconscious mind. God has a perfect image of me, and my subconscious mind recreates my body in perfect accordance with that perfect image. This minister got better in a very impressive way. This is a simple and easy way to tell your subconscious mind that you are in great health. Use of disciplined or scientific thought is another great way to get the idea of health into your subconscious. This man has functional paralysis. I told him to make a clear picture of himself walking around his office, touching the desk, answering the phone, and doing everything else he normally does if he were fixed. I told him that his subconscious mind would accept this thought and mental picture of being in perfect health. He really felt like he was back in the office when he played the part. It was clear to him that he was giving his subconscious mind something solid to work on. His subconscious mind was like a film that the picture was stuck on. This mental picture had been training his mind for a few weeks when one day, as planned, the phone kept ringing while his wife and nurse were away. Even though the phone was only 12 feet away, he was still able to answer it. At that time, he was healed. When he thought about healing, his subconscious mind's healing power reacted, and he got better. This man had a mental block that kept brain signals from getting to his legs. That's why he said he couldn't walk. When he focused on the healing power inside him, the power ran through him and made it possible for him to walk. Anything you ask for in prayer, believing that you will receive it, says chapter 4. Mental Healing in the Past Over the years, guys from all over the world have naturally thought that somewhere inside them was a healing power that could make their bodies work and feel normal again. They thought this strange power could be called upon in certain situations, which would then make people's pain go away. There is evidence for this view in the past of every country. In the early days of the world, Priests and holy men from every country were said to have the power to quietly change people for good or bad, even to heal the sick. In different parts of the world, people thought that their ability to heal came straight from God. The ways that people healed were also different. Prayers to God were combined with different rituals, such as laying on of hands, incantations, and the use of amulets, talismans, rings, relics, and pictures to help people get better. In ancient religions, for example, priests in shrines would give drugs to patients 
and use hypnotic suggestions to get them to sleep. They would then tell the patients that the gods would visit them while they slept and fix them. Then there were many healings. It's clear that all of this was caused by strong hints to the subconscious mind. People who followed strange rituals would see the goddess while they slept, but only if they prayed to her in a certain way before bed. They were told to pound lizards, resin, frankincense and myrrh together outside under a half moon. Many people said they got better after this horrible treatment. There's no doubt that these strange processes, as shown in the examples, made a strong mental connection with the people's subconscious minds, which led to advice and acceptance. It's more likely that the person's subconscious mind did all of these healings. In all times and places, private doctors have done amazing things when official medical care has failed. This makes me wonder, how do these doctors in different parts of the world change the way they treat people? In all of these cases, the sick person's blind faith let the healing power that was hidden in his subconscious mind come out. A lot of the treatments and methods used were pretty strange and fantastic, which sparked the patient's imaginations and made them feel very emotional. The sick person's conscious and subconscious minds both agreed with the idea of getting better when they were in this state of mind. This will be talked about in more depth in the next part. The Bible talks about how the subconscious mind works. Whatever you pray for, believe that you will receive it and you will have it. Notice the difference in tenses. The inspired writer tells us to believe and accept that our wish has already been granted, that it is already finished, and that it will come true in the future. To get this method to work, you have to be sure that the thought, idea, or picture is already real in your mind. Something must be thought of as existing in the world of mind in order for it to have reality there. By putting the thing you want into your subconscious mind, you can use the creative power of your mind. Here are some vague instructions on how to do this. In its own world, your thought, idea, plan or goal is real, just like your hand or heart. When you use the biblical method, you remove from your mind all conditions, events or anything else that could mean bad things will happen. You are putting an idea or a seed in your mind that if you don't touch it, will always grow into something real. Faith is the most important thing. You read in the Bible over and over, according to your faith, it is done unto you. For example, if you put certain seeds, you believe they will grow into plants of the same type. This is how seeds go. You know that these seeds will grow into plants of the same type because you believe in the rules of growth and farming. The Bible says that faith is a way of thinking, a state of mind, and an inner certainty that the thought you fully accept in your conscious mind will become real in your subconscious mind. In a way, faith means taking as true things that your mind and feelings tell you are not true. For instance, it means shutting down your small, logical, critical conscious mind and putting all of your faith in the power of your subconscious mind. Miracles at different shrines around the world. It is a known fact that people have been healed at different shrines around the world, including in Japan, India, Europe, and the United States. I've been to a few of Japan's well-known sites. There is a huge bronze statue of Buddha at the famous shrine called Daibutsu. His hands are folded together and his head is tilted back in a pose of deep meditation joy. The Great Buddha is its name. It is 42 feet tall. I saw people of all ages making gifts at its feet. Oranges, food, money and rice were given. People lit candles, burned incense and said words of plea. The guide told us about the station. Young girl said a prayer in her head, bowed low and put down two oranges as a gift. She lit a candle too. He said she had lost her voice, but that the shrine gave it back. She was thanking Buddha for making her voice better. Simple faith told her that Buddha would give her back her singing voice if she did a certain rite, fasted, and gave certain gifts. 
All of this made her believe and have faith, which conditioned her mind to the point of believing. Her subconscious mind reacted to what she thought. I will tell you about a family member who had cancer to show how powerful fantasy and blind faith can be. His lungs were really sick. His son chose to help his dad get better. When he got back to Perth, Western Australia, where his father lived, he told him that he had met a monk who had just come back from a healed shrine in Europe. He bought a piece of the real cross from this monk. He told them that he paid the monk about $500 for it. This young man picked up a piece of wood from the ground, took it to a jeweler, and had it set in a ring so it looked real. It healed many people just to touch the ring or the cross, he told his dad. The way he made his father feel made him so angry that the old man took the ring from him, put it over his chest, prayed quietly, and went to sleep. He was better in the morning. The center did tests that all came back negative. You know, of course, that it wasn't the splinter of wood from the sidewalk that healed him. It was his mind being awakened to a very high level, along with his faith or subjective feeling. The combination of these two things led to his healing. The dad never found out about the trick that was pulled on him. He most likely would have had a return if he had. He stayed fully better and died 15 years later when he was 89 years old. One universal healing principle. It is a well-known fact that all of the different schools of healing affect cures of the most wonderful character. The most obvious conclusion which hits your mind is that there must be some underlying principle which is common to them all, namely the subconscious mind, and the one process of recovery is faith. It will now be in order to remember to your mind once more the following fundamental truths. First, that you must possess mental processes which have been distinguished by designating one of the conscious mind and the other the subconscious mind. Second, the power of influence can always work on your subconscious mind. Additionally, your subconscious mind is in charge of all of your body's processes, situations and feelings. I dare to think that all the readers of this book are familiar with the fact that signs of almost any disease can be caused in hypnotic subjects by suggestion. For example, a person in the hypnotic state can develop a high temperature, flushed face, or chills according to the type of the idea made. By trial, you can suggest to the person that he is disabled and cannot walk. It will be so. By example, you can hold a cup of cold water under the nose of the hypnotic subject and tell him, this is full of pepper, smell it. He will continue to sneeze. What do you think caused him to sneeze, the water or the suggestion? If a man says he is allergic to Timothy grass, you can put a fake flower or an empty glass in front of his nose when he is in a hypnotic state and tell him it is Timothy grass. He will portray the usual allergic symptoms. This shows that the cause of the disease is in the mind. The healing of the sickness can also take place mentally. You realize that remarkable healings take place through osteopathy, chiropractic, medicine and naturopathy, as well as through all the various religious bodies throughout the world. But it is obvious that all of these healings are brought about through the subconscious mind the only healer there is. Notice how it fixes the cut on your face caused by shaving. It knows exactly how to do it. The doctor dresses the cut and says, nature fixes it. Nature refers to natural law, the law of the subconscious mind or self-preservation, which is the function of the subconscious mind. The sense of self-preservation is the first law of nature. Your strongest instinct is the most powerful of all. Auto-suggestions, greatly different theories. It would be tedious and unprofitable to talk to any great extent the numerous theories advanced by different religious sects and prayer treatment groups. There are a great number who say that because their theory produces results, it is, therefore, the right one. This, as stated in this chapter, cannot be true. 
You are aware that there are all types of healings. Franz Anton Mesmer, an Austrian physician from 1734 to 1815 who worked in Paris, found that by applying magnets to the sick body, he could treat that disease magically. He also performed fixes with different other pieces of glass and metals. He ceased this form of treatment and claimed that his cures were due to animal magnetism, believing that his substance was projected from the healer to the patient. His way of treating sickness from then on was by hypnotism, which was called mesmerism in his day. Other doctors said that all his healings were due to advice and nothing else. All of these groups, such as psychiatrists, psychologists, acupaths, chiropractors, doctors, and all the churches, are using the one global power resident in the subconscious mind. Each may say the healings are due to their idea. The process of all healing is a clear good mental attitude and inner attitude or a way of thought called faith. Healing is due to a confident expectancy which works as a strong hint to the subconscious mind, releasing its healing energy. One man does not heal by a different force than another. It is true he may have his own idea or method. There is only one process of healing, and that is trust. There is only one healing power, namely your subconscious mind. Select the idea and method you prefer. You can rest assured if you have faith, you shall get results. Views of Paracelsus Philip S. Paracelsus, a famous Swiss alchemist and surgeon who lived from 1493 to 1540, was a great doctor in his day. He stated what is now a clear scientific fact when he uttered these words. Whether the object of your faith be real or fake, you will nevertheless receive the same results. Thus, if I believed in St. Peter's figure, as I should have believed in St. Peter himself, I shall obtain the same results that I should have obtained from St. Peter. But that is myth. Faith, however, produces miracles, and whether it is true or false faith, it will always produce the same wonders. The views of Paracelsus were also entertained in the 16th century by Pedro Papanazzi, an Italian philosopher and contemporary of Paracelsus, who said, we can easily conceive the marvelous effects which confidence and imagination can produce, particularly when both qualities are reciprocated between the subjects and the person who influences them. The cures credited to the impact of certain objects are the result of their imagination and faith. Quacks and thinkers know that if the bones of any skeleton were put in place of the saint's bones, the sick would nonetheless experience positive effects if they believe that they were real relics. Then, if you believe in the bones of saints, the heel, or if you believe in the healing power of certain waters, you will get results because of the powerful hint given to your subconscious mind. It is the latter that does the healing. Bernheim's experiments. Hippolyte Bernheim, a professor of medicine at Nancy, France from 1910 to 1919, was the expounder of the fact that the advice of the physician to the patient was exerted through the subconscious mind. Bernheim, in his Suggestive Therapies, page 197, tells a story of a man with paralysis of the tongue which had given to no form of treatment. His doctor told the patient that he had a new tool with which he promised to heal him. He inserted a small thermometer into the patient's mouth. The patient believed it to be the tool which was to save him. In a few moments, he cried out happily that he could once more move his tongue freely. Among our cases, continues Bernheim, facts of the same sort will be found. A young girl came into my office having suffered from total lack of speech for nearly four weeks. After making sure of the diagnosis, I told my students that loss of speech, sometimes she ordered quickly to electricity, which might act simply by its suggestive effect. I sent for the induction gear. I put my hand over the larynx and moved a little and said, now you can speak aloud. In an instant, I made her say A, then B, then Maria. She continued to speak distinctively. The loss of voice had vanished. 
Here, Bernheim is showing the power of faith and expectation on the part of the patient, which works as a strong suggestion to the subconscious mind, creating a blister by suggestion. Bernheim states that he produced a blister on the back of a patient's neck by applying a postage stamp and suggesting to the patient that it was a fly placer. This has been confirmed by the experiments and experiences of many doctors in many parts of the world, which leave no doubt that structural changes are a possible result of oral suggestion to patients. The Cause of Bloody Stigmata In Hudson's Law of Psychic Phenomena, page 153, he states, Hemorrhages and bloody stigmata are induced in certain subjects by means of suggestion. Dr. M. Beru put a subject into the somnambulistic condition and gave him the following suggestion. At four o'clock this afternoon, after the hypnosis, you will come into my office, sit down in the armchair, cross your arms upon your breast, and your nose will begin to bleed. At the hour appointed, the young man did as directed. Several drops of blood came from the left nostril. On another occasion, the same investigator traced the patient's name on both his forearms with the dull point of an instrument. Then, when the patient was in the somnambulistic condition, he said, At four o'clock this afternoon, you will go to sleep, and your arms will bleed along the lines which I have traced, and your name will appear written on your arms in letters of blood. He was watched at four o'clock and seen to fall asleep. On the left arm, the letters stood out in bright relief, and in several places there were drops of blood. The letters were still visible three months afterward, although they had gradually grown faint. These facts demonstrate at once the correctness of the two fundamental propositions previously stated, namely, the constant amenability of the subconscious mind to the power of suggestion and the perfect control which the subconscious mind exercises over the functions, sensations and conditions of the body. All the foregoing phenomena dramatized vividly abnormal conditions induced by suggestion and are conclusive proof that as a man thinketh in his heart, subconscious mind, so is he.